Hello, Western community, and especially Western students. I have been thinking about you and wondering how you have managed over the past few weeks. And quite frankly, it's been, it's been really rough trying to muster up the, the words to, to share with you how I am feeling in this time. It has indeed been a time when I am or have been feeling not okay. And so if you have also been feeling not okay um, and feeling the burden of, of this heaviness, this renewed energy and focus on an oppression that many of you live every day and some of you are just learning about, it's a heavy time. It is really heavy. And Western's campus is, has not gone unscathed. Um, it's been a heavy time for all of us as we grapple with the insidious and quite disgusting nature of racism in America. The world has cried out for this racism in America. We have pulled the scab off of the womb um, because of racism in America. And for the colleagues of mine that have, um, you know, come forward and supported me and supported some of our students because I've seen emails from professors who have we supported students who are going through just unthinkable stress right now um, around grades and exams and finals. Thank you. Thank you for your support of our students. Thank you for your support of our um, of your colleagues, uh, thank you for reaching out and recognizing that it is difficult to even explain. Like, I cannot think of any words to explain to you how difficult the past uh, few weeks have been. As it, it's, uh, you know, the burden that we carry for having this sun-kissed skin has been amplified um, by watching these senseless murders, you know, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, and then George Floyd, and back to back, it's like an assault on your spirit that already has to grapple with daily assaults and daily microaggressions and daily feelings of oppression in places that you shouldn't feel oppressed. You shouldn't feel any type of way other than as a human being showing up. But you know that when you show up in this brown and black skin that you are being judged when you walk through these doors, um, any doors that you walk through. It's been difficult. It's been difficult to lead. Uh, over the past couple of weeks. And so I know that it's been difficult to finish your studies. I know that it has. I have three sons and it's been difficult for them. Um, they're not a black mother, I am. And so when my sons decide they wanna go for a walk or wanna just you know, go to a track and run, um, it has been nerve wracking to think I don't know if I want you to go for a run. I don't know if I want you to go for a walk. I don't know um, because I don't know whether you'll come back. I don't know whether you'll be bruised or beaten or called the N word. Um, and I and I right now, with all of the unpacking of the grief and the you know literally spilling over in meetings with emotion. I don't know if I would be able to handle it. Just there's just been so much. What I do know is that 
Um, we have been in this country in extremely trying times before. And we have dealt with racism before. We have tasted the, the, the bile of white supremacy before. And our ancestral DNA each time has allowed us to overcome, has allowed us to not just survive, but to thrive. And so my message to you is to, you know, continue to thrive and continue to survive in the face of all of this violence that is being assaulted upon um, Black people right now. When I think about the graduates of 2020 and this recession that you're being handed, um, this pandemic of COVID-19, this explosive pandemic of racism, this shadow pandemic of mental health and mental illness, and all of these pandemics colliding in the perfect storm, my heart is grieved. My heart is grieved, even though I know that history has taught us that when you look back on this time, you just might look fondly on how you were able to make it through. For now, as much as you have to struggle with this world that we have not figured out how to fix for you, my heart is grieved. Over the past couple of weeks, I've had colleagues reach out and, um, and ask questions about what can they do? How can they support? Um, I've had people email me and I'm so grateful for the outpouring of love. Um, and I do have a, a couple of things to offer. It's by no means inclusive, but there are a couple of things to offer in the short time that I'm going to take. And one is to educate yourself. While there are colleagues of yours that can give you insights into their own personal experience, it can only touch the surface. I could spend the next two weeks doing a workshop with you on racism in America and just use my stories of trying to um, work and thrive and survive and pick my head up and be reminded of that I'm good enough. Um, I could spend the next couple of weeks just doing a workshop on that and it still wouldn't tell um, a fraction of the story. And so educate yourself. This is a time when books are your friend. There are several, there are just a multitude. I mean, Google is your friend of websites. Um, there are a couple of books. One. Um, I will give you uh, White Fragility is, is a great book. And then there is a book that was written by a sister who attended Western. And this book is called So You Want to Talk About Race by Ijeoma Olo'u, who um, has a beautiful piece that is very poetic, but also sort of a guide on how to have those really tough conversations. Um, so I would say educate yourself. That's number one. Find ways to get some of the answers. Why, you know, this is so explosive. Why now? Why the, why, you know, what, what was it about this moment in history? What is, has this, this, this season, why is it so ripe? And it has collectively touched a nerve to be able to watch um, a police officer with his knee on the neck of a black man um, and just as poised as, he seemed just as poised as he could, you know, be drinking a cup of coffee or tea in, in one hand. And meanwhile, with the cameras on, um, having what seems like very little affect, no emotion, just kind of like, you know, um, just being very reckless and, and, and murderous, the intent just seems so, um, just vitriolic. So it struck a collective nerve. 
And so educate yourself on why this, this, you know, black people are, are just exhausted with this type of treatment, this type of careless and meaningful and this animalistic and vitriolic treatment. The second thing that you can do is we think a lot about call out. You know, this is the call out culture. People talk about call out, call out, don't call people out. This is, I'm going to use a different phrase and that is call in. You can use the call out, call in. It all means the same thing, but call in people. When people are um, trying to communicate with you and maybe uses, use, you know, uses uh, the wrong phrase to communicate or um, doesn't quite get the phrasing right, call them in, educate them, help them understand your heart and where you're coming from. Call in, call your parents at home that are racist, who I've had a colleague say, I don't wanna call my father because he's in a racist part of the country. You know, newsflash, the whole country has racist parts. And so call them in, call in colleagues, when there are opportunities to have those conversations that say, um, you know, I'm gonna call you in right now or call you out because you have just said something that I think we need to illuminate. Give, please give her an opportunity to speak or just do it with love. And I think that we can call in and take this opportunity to use the privilege that you have to provide a space for someone who does not have that privilege. So I would say call in people and do it from the spirit of love. And then the other thing that you could do is the third thing would be to listen. We have 16,000 students on Western's campus and less than 500 last time I checked were black. That means that they are going to need people who can listen with empathy. You cannot understand. You will never be able to understand what it feels like to live in this skin. You will never understand what it feels like if you do not have black skin. You can try and you can do everything humanly possible to empathize. And that is what I'm asking you to do for your colleagues, your black colleagues, and for students, on um, black students. Do your best to empathize um, and listen. Give them an opportunity to share their story. Everybody has one and they're all different. They're all deep. They're all meaningful. And to students, share your stories. Your stories are meaningful. Um, your stories count. Um, and it's important that you feel like you have the, the ability to do that um, in a place that wants to listen to your stories. And so I just thought I would um, stop by to, to share some love and to spread some light and to remind you also to breathe. Because I've noticed that a lot of people are not breathing in deeply right now. Um, take care of yourself um, because after all, um, you know, Maya Angelou has a quote that goes something like this. Um, it is important to be courageous enough to be able to have and show self-compassion. And it is even equally as important to love yourself and be compassionate enough to take care of someone else and love someone else. And so do that as you move along and continue to, to live and speak your truths. I'm encouraging you to share your stories, um, lift your voice, be seen, um, be heard, um, and continue to uh, take care of yourself and take care of others. Thank you.